Hello, I am Bo. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode four of A's Your Ages. Yes. And um, we are going to finally talk about a game that was birthed as an arcade game. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, that it literally, that's where it owns its, it owes its home. Uh, it, our first episode was Sonic Adventure 2, which mm-hmm. was a home console. Our second episode was... Uh, wow. <laughs> Has it been that long? <laughs> it was wow. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was World of Warcraft. Yeah. No. Um... <laughs> Gosh, no, we this? we did uh, we did Sonic Adventure, um, and then we did uh, Parappa, Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, okay, um, which should have been an arcade yeah. game. Obviously, and you, then we you did didn't believe Castlevania um, Symphony of the <laughs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yes. And now we're finally going to cover an actual, honest to goodness arcade game. Yes, a fighting and, game. Uh, I'm. This game needs no introduction. We're going to be talking about Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. The uh, re- we're going to talk about the first three games because yes. I really don't. For what we do on Azure Ages, I don't think that each one constitutes their own episode. For what no. we cover on Azure Ages, I mean, because that would be like twenty of them, but like they also don't all fit. But Mortal Kombat is Mortal Kombat is the video game. Yeah, like it is. It is such a not. It is such a microcosm of the entire '90s video game mm-hmm. scene. It's probably one of the first games all of us lied to our parents about. Yes. Uh, do you want see, do you want cheat codes? Mm-hmm. It, they're there. Yep. Do you want secret characters? They're, they're there. there. Do you want playground rumors about what you could do in this game that actually yeah. weren't true? <laughs> oh my god! You got a ton of them. Yes. Do you want uh, like public controversy? It's mm-hmm. there. It, it, it. This is. Do you want to have a at the time revolutionary way of depicting the characters in the game? It's there. Yeah, actually, um, they were um, they were a uh, primitive mocap. Yeah, a and very the, primitive mocap. And the the sprites we saw were spriteified uh, versions of the mocappers, basically. Yeah, um, people played these when you beat the game. You had a credits roll, and you saw who literally mm-hmm. played these characters. Um, Which that never. I mean, that's like weird. I mean, we don't see any reuse out there. I think that this was the most pop cultureified game. Yeah. Ever to that point. Yeah. It was and, everywhere. And arguably in the nineties. You could you could say that that legacy has continued too. Um there are very few other video games that have had multiple movies, TV shows, their own song. Um, which is still a banger to this day. Uh let's just let like <sighs> Wow, this is. I'm looking at uh, the wiki. I'm looking at the uh, fandom wiki for Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. and I am looking at uh, pop culture references to Mortal Kombat. That list is probably a mile long. Easy. Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, in most of them, uh, most of them are just people in movie. People in movies are seen playing these games Mm -hmm. like that that, that's what most of them are um and i don't i don't remember that happening to very very many other like i don't remember a single movie where i saw someone playing like final fantasy 7 um or i let me let me actually use a a true a true uh street or uh, 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 arcade game um i don't remember well heck the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I don't remember a single uh, arcade machine in any of those that I actually knew. Granted, that was before Mortal Kombat, but... This is this is incredible. Um, this is actually really incredible. Um, so you know how in the 90s... Ni- Mortal Kombat suffered from this greatly. Mm-hmm. In the 90s, people would uh, on television would talk about video games. Mm-hmm. And uh, you could tell that adults who, in our generation, uh, our adults did not play video games. No. They had no frame of reference for them at almost no adult did. No. They, um, the, the, what they, if they had any idea about video games, they thought, uh, like, Pong is right, what they thought. Right. That was a, that was a video game. Um, so, but, mo- but we, when ch- we children would listen to it, we wouldn't even get the joke because they just, it was, it was jumbled. Yeah. It, the writer had no idea what they were talking about so badly mm-hmm. that the joke didn't even make sense. And there's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, no. Um, and, and this is, this, this perfectly encapsulates that phenomenon. <laughs> 
Um, in the episode, Fra I'm reading from the wiki here. In the episode, Francis escapes. Reese mentions the fact that nobody believes that he beat the secret level of Mortal Kombat. Which first, what? <laughs> yeah, this is what? a fighting game. You don't yeah. have levels. And Reese is talking about Mortal Kombat and Malcolm in the Middle. We're at least on Mortal Kombat Four. I guess they were supposed to be a poor family, so maybe they had to. Yeah, they were the like ones. they were like very low middle class, I guess technically. And um, the dad, Walter White, mm -hmm. Hal. Uh, he responds. He hadn't broke bad yet. Uh, because that's just ridiculous. No one beats Sub Zero. There's nothing secret about Sub Zero. No, I mean, at all. he's playable if, from the get go. If he had said because that's just ridiculous, no one beats Reptile. This would come close to making yeah. some form of sense because in the first game, Reptile was a secret enemy. Yeah. Um, or but, maybe like you could also argue, I guess, Smoke at one point. Oh, that's terrible. It, it's that's just funny. It's awful. That's so um, bad. Yeah, that's like we're putting this in so that our par that parents can laugh at their kids while they watch this show. <laughs> um, Goro was in Imagination Land in the South Park uh, uh, Imagination <laughs> Land episode. That's that's really good. That's fantastic. Um, apparently the Boondocks had a lot of them. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Um, one thing uh, you mentioned, this is a pop culture reference, but uh, the playground rumors. I cannot explain to you how many times and for how long I tried entering in this code that my buddy gave me on the playground <laughs> to enable blood in Mortal Kombat 1. On, on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, I believe this was the source of nude codes. Yeah. The the fictitious, 100% fictitious mm -hmm. nude codes. I don't think there was ever a video game that had a nude code that actually made your characters nude. Uh, one of the Tomb Raiders. That was a Game Shark hack, though. That wasn't like I did it on computer. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but Mayor Topless. Um, I, I remember it. And, and the only thing I would say is if my this is on my cousin's computer, if he had something on. The, I don't think there was any game shark equivalents for computers, though, at that time. But whatever it was, I mean, maybe he had something, a very, yeah, a very primitive uh, mod. But I distinctly remember it only worked in her training room. And oh, there yeah. was a very specific yeah. thing you had to do, yeah. like a certain combina combination of, of movements and buttons. And then her she would lose her shirt. And she would be topless. <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah, but, it, but it's like, but no, yeah. Basically, what we're trying to tell you right now is that this game was everywhere. Everyone wanted a piece of Mortal Kombat. Yes, everyone. Yeah, it um, this is why these shows were making references to it when they didn't know what they were mm -hmm. talking about. Because if you said Mortal Kombat, a kid's ears in the '90s would prick up and yes. listen. Yes, because it, it, it took it by storm. It was ubiquitous. Yeah, it was 100. percent Like it, everyone knew Mortal Kombat. Um. I'm not gonna. I, the one episode we're doing about Mortal Kombat, I'm not gonna bore you guys with my Mortal Kombat story. You've heard it a million <laughs> times before if you've listened to Don Ron regularly. Um, if you want to hear it, uh, hit me up in the comments or something. On the, I know that's a cheap call for comments, but but like hit me up in the comments, join our Discord. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy to retell it there. It's kind of a funny story. Um, but so Mortal Kombat has been released on virtually every single medium upon which you could play a video game ever yeah. um, that existed after. During or after the release of the first game. Yeah. Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 and Ultimate 3 are available everywhere. There's no mm -hmm. excuse to not play these games. And so uh, let's backtrack a little bit because um, I, I did want to touch on how much this affected pop culture because it, it's phenomenal for a video game to have mm -hmm. done so at the time that it did. Yeah. Mario was not talked about as much no. as Mortal Kombat and, and I, in the I, early 90s. I have a feeling some of that had to have been because of the, the supposed oh, the controversies. controversy. Yeah, absolutely. But Which, fun, like, uh, we'll talk more about this, too. Like, one thing I, I definitely want to mention is, like, the tone shift. See, I haven't played the old, the original Mortal Kombats in a long time. It'd be a while mm -hmm. since I revisited them. I'll be, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah, I revisited them here recently. I played 1, 2, and 3. There is a hard tone shift in the game between one and two yes like the one is very shaolin it's it, very it's a fighting movie. it's a fighting tournament yep it's a um, fighting tournament and uh the and then mortal kombat 2 is when you get that mortal kombat what everyone now knows is mortal kombat blood fatality crazy shit that kicks in, in mortal kombat 2 yeah, and that's where uh, which is why I go don't to Outworld. Yeah, um, the the tournament takes place in Outworld. It's yeah, in Earth Realm, which um, which makes me laugh now because I like part of me even wonders why there was a controversy about Mortal Kombat the first one in the first place because it was no more. I mean, even the Genesis version that had the blood in it was not very bloody. I mean, it wasn't. It, it was fatalities nothing. were you know, but 
That's assuming you even were able to pull them off. Yeah, most kids were not able to pull them off back in the day. But no. um, so I can't pull them off now. Mortal Kombat about? one, two, and three are fighting games. They mm-hmm. are fighting games in the vein of Street Fighter two. Yeah. Street Fighter two created this. It created this culture in arcades, mm-hmm. um, where fighting games just became dominant. Fighting games are a perfect arcade game because yeah. you you walk up to a cabinet with a buddy. Mm-hmm. There's two sticks, two sets of buttons. You put in the quarters. You could fight each other. Yep. The winner in almost every fighting game arcade I've ever seen, the winner gets to go. His his quarter's still good. Yeah. The losers is bad. So what happens next? Yeah. Um, and you, you just go as long as you can. And it, when and, and that was really cool. I remember uh, I've said this a million times, but it bears repeating for this episode. Uh, my mom, there was an arcade in Evansville, uh, the city that's closest to us. And uh, we would go there a lot. And my mom would drop me and my friends off at this arcade. I'm sure you were there a lot. Probably. Um, and mom would go do whatever. Now, mm-hmm. my mother was a babysitter over the summers. There was always hella kids at my house, mm-hmm. um, which was cool and sucked at the same time. It just depended on how I felt when I woke up. But yeah. it was mom's job, so there wasn't really much I could do about uh-huh. it. But um, So I really feel like she literally dumped all these badass kids at this uh, <laughs> arcade and went to like the bar or something in the mall and had like <laughs> one drink, just one yeah. drink. I'm kidding. My mom would have drank on the job. Not to calm her nerves from dealing with all those kids. I don't. She wasn't a big shopper. My mom's not a shopper, so mm. she might have just taken a break and like strolled around the mall or something. Yeah. And we would sit. And a nap. I used to love watching <laughs> the high schoolers play fighting games. Mm-hmm. I used to love watching them do that. And um, Mortal Kombat was. It's not really like as lauded as a technical masterpiece as Street Fighter Two or no. King of Fighters or stuff like that. Uh, but it has a, an appeal of fun. It yeah. It has tight controls, mm-hmm. easy to learn combos. E- it's very easy to learn, hard to master. Yeah, it's. De- I would definitely say that's the case. Um, Ed Boon, one of the game designers who is still with the series, he's still yeah. in charge of the series to this day, which is super impressive in yeah, video games. Yeah, it's awesome. Most people either lose their franchises mm-hmm. or they move on from them themselves. They're like, yeah. look. You can keep the IP alive, give it to someone else. Mm-hmm. I don't care. But yeah. but Ed Boon, Mortal Kombat's still been his trucking. baby his whole career. And what's even better is he he hasn't become the villain yet. Um, he has not uh, lived long enough to see himself become the villain. No, he's still um, very he's not uh, a Todd Howard. Very loved by his um, by the community that loves his games, which mm-hmm. uh, is the opposite of Todd Howard. Yeah, Todd Howard, for better or worse, is the at like. He's solely responsible for bringing us Elder Scrolls, but we all hate what he's done to Elder yeah. Scrolls. Like, I mean, he, um, if he would have left it alone, but like, but you know, you know, Todd, you know what the, you know what's really great it about just works. Just, Mortal Kombat <laughs> just works, Todd. Um, in, in Mortal Kombat, it's not very buggy. I can't remember any of these games being very buggy. Um, no, they were they very well programmed, very well yeah. executed. There, there are things that I personally would say were perhaps cheap mm-hmm. but not they weren't a, it wasn't a bug but there was a lot of things that were purposely cheap too ed mm-hmm. boone himself is a huge fan of free moves yeah he likes setting the player up for free moves which is where we get the character of sub-zero mm-hmm. that entire character was based on giving you a free move and uh, sub-zero is my personal favorite character in the series yeah i like sub-zero I because he's in every game mm-hmm. you're not going to play a game where you can't play a sub-zero yeah there's someone who pl- who fulfills the class of sub-zero like they even i think Mortal Kombat 4 originally shipped without Scorpion. Uh, uh, 3 did. 3 did? That's why That's why God. Ultimate 3 was made. Because 3 yeah. did not have Scorpion, and it didn't have, I think, Katana? It, there was two two mm. characters, big characters. One was and Scorpion. Fans were like, where what the hell? is Scorpion? Um, and there was like other features and stuff that weren't in the game, too. And so then they did the release of Ultimate, Ultimate 3. Ultimate 3, which, which Ultimate 3 is the superior. Yeah. Don't ever play 3 if you have no. the option to play Ultimate 3. No, just get just get um, Ultimate. It gives you better characters. It gives you, it works better. It literally works better. A gigantic roster for its day. Yeah, it's like, oh, hell, it's like, what, 15, 20 characters, something like that? It's crazy. Somewhere around there, it's a huge yeah. roster for its day. Um, that's still big by modern standards, even. I've noticed yeah. Fighting game rosters have gotten smaller again, which I personally like. I don't like having a huge roster, unless the, it's like Smash or yeah, something. Yeah, the, the problem... That's fun, but... So, the problem with a huge roster, this is where... The, the reason why it works in Smash, in my opinion, and it doesn't work in other games, is because if you get these huge rosters, you get a lot of repeats. 
It's a different character, sure. They look a little different. They may throw f a fireball instead of a, bo a bl bolt of lightning, but they're it's the same character, same moves, same style of combat, right? And that's what happens with big game rosters, in my opinion. But like Smash, I mean, hell, Pikachu and Pichu are totally different, but they're literally right, the same, right. but they're still totally different. That's what makes Smash Which great I think in that speaks regard. To Masahiro Sakurai's amazing ability as a game director. Yeah. Uh, so Mortal Kombat, it, it, you have rounds, just like any other fighting game. Yeah. Best of three, yeah. defaulted. But at the end, if you claim victory, if you do get the best of three, unlike every other fighting game ever, because mm -hmm. that, that's the challenge when you enter a bloated field. Yeah. How do you? Because this field get was getting different. bloated. Yeah. Um, how are you different from the other ones? Um, in Mortal Kombat, they didn't have, uh, they, they didn't have Street Fighters, super super technical mm -hmm. aspect. They didn't have any of these other gimmicks. But what they did have was, if you win the rant, if you win the match, mm -hmm. both rounds, the screen flashes as finish him, yep. and you can input something. To kill the other guy, yeah, you've won to kill him. You'll yeah, mutilate him. Kill. You'll kill him. Yeah, it's not. It's never pleasant. And this is fantastic. This is, I think, just a great thing for arcade culture, mm -hmm. because it was so hype when you saw someone pull it off in the arcade. Yeah, and what it, it doesn't affect your victory. You yeah. won. It's By the time it says finish him, you've won. But this is your chance to say, I won. Yeah, this is to rub it in. It's to rub yeah. it in, and and. and it's gotten to where, and I, I don't know about tournament culture, um, I imagine, I don't watch Mortal Kombat professionally, mm -hmm. but I imagine it's uh, considered rude to do a fatality because it's just going to prolong the match. Yeah, that would be I would be my imagine guess. they just want you to end it, get to the next match, because um, yeah. they're always strapped for time. You know, the faster you can make it go, the better. And Generally I, I understand speaking. that. Like in, the star in professional StarCraft, there is a point when you know you're going to lose. It is considered very rude not to concede. Yeah. It is considered very well, rude to make him hunt down every little drone you've got on the map. I mean, in a game like StarCraft, where, like, literally you have to... You compare comp uh, opponents by their clicks per minute, like, you know it's speed. Yeah, so... Yeah, absolutely. Um, And so... uh, But in the arcade culture... Mm -hmm. It's considered rude not to give me a fatality. Yeah, that's like a low blow. What do you? What do yeah. you mean? Like you? What do you mean you it, won yeah. and you're not even gonna dignify me yes. with a fatality? That's exactly what it is. It's like you, it's disrespectful at that point. You, you absolutely, you, yeah. Th that I earned this. Yes. Death. Th okay. So a, a good relation to the the uh, non nineties kids. Um, uh. The, it, it's kind of like the reverse of uh, your opponent teabagging you in your favorite shooter game. Um, the, Halo that, is the only one that is valid and still, yeah, by the way. But like, if if someone does that, you're just like, you son of. A. And but in Mortal Kombat, if they don't honor your fight mm -hmm. with a fatality or later on uh, brutalities, babalities, what have you, um, that how could you you. You you dishonor me. I have earned this warrior's death. Yes. You will send me to Valhalla. <laughs> um, and, and it's it's and that I think is part of the fun of Mortal Kombat is mm -hmm. that it, it, there's it's competitive, but you get that moment after the competition yeah. where you both could just be like, I yeah, you know, and you get this like it's such an over the top thing. Even the most simple of fatalities and that is, is how, so over the that top. That is how Ed Boon described it. He actually has described himself as being very shocked that there was so much controversy because mm -hmm. he honestly felt that he and his team, and uh, John Tobias was also in charge of the series back then. Yeah, He's yeah. gone now. Mm -hmm. But he so uh, but Ed Boon's the one that talks about this in interviews because he was always kind of the talk guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the face. And he was always shocked by the controversy because he's like, we're making this as we're ridiculous as we can mm -hmm. he's like there's a kung fu man with a sword hat cutting someone yeah. in half like he's like i don't i don't get this it's kind of like um i just saw an interview with the icp mm -hmm. where they were basically saying the same thing he's like we've literally got fucking clown makeup on yeah like, like how more why obvious? are we being blamed yeah for this shit and um yeah it, it's so funny because like if you take three seconds to think about it yeah like the fact that it's so over the top is what makes it like it, it makes it like n like a uh, innoc not innocuous. What am I thinking of? It, it makes it it makes it not bad. Yeah, <laughs> it, like it's 
I'm uh, not the smart one. One of the fatalities he uh, he cited was in Mortal Kombat 3. One of Jax's fatalities is he grows giant and steps on the other guy. Oh, yeah. He, didn't, he doesn't have that ability. He's not described as having that ability. No, he just does it. He just does it. Um, um, or uh, I think the only fatality, the only one even remotely, even remotely I would accept a maybe argument on, maybe and this is like i'm really stretching for this right is um uh was it scorpion who would just pull your freaking spine out with your head that he like predator you or was that sub-zero who did that one no sub-zero always froze you in his sub-zero did it and then froze it and crushed it yeah and scorpion wasn't did, wasn't one of them in scorpion he would like grab scorpion. it and just like yeah. rip it right out like yeah. okay maybe because that one's relatively simple but mm -hmm. the thing is those if you if you have half a brain, you can't you can't rip somebody's head off. <laughs> it does not work like that. I am sorry. Freaking uh, Thor, uh, half Thor, Thor, big man, the mountain, whatever his real name is. He, oh yeah, he, from, he can't yeah. he can't rip somebody's head off. Yeah, like it's not gonna happen. Just relax. Right. Let me enjoy this. Yeah. Let me. <laughs> I need this. I need this for me. Um. <laughs> The uh, <laughs> Space Ghost Coast to Coast. If you guys have not ever watched that show, please yes. do yourself a favor. Get find on. out whatever it's streaming on and watch the it's hell out of so it. It's so good. It is, it is the so, source of It is so the many. original Adult Swim show. It is. And it is the reason why dry humor and, and dumb, crazy humor got so popular. The, Anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my favorite episode was uh, Tom York was on it from... Uh, uh, Tom York from uh, Radiohead. Oh God! And yeah, uh, he goes, he goes, Space Ghost. What's what's this on your face here? What, what is that? And uh, Space Ghost goes, it's a, a mouth. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, don't touch me. Don't. <laughs> so, it, Mortal Kombat. So there, it had a distinct arcade culture. And mm -hmm. arcades got these games a year before they were released at home. Yep. Um, it was always a year before you got it at home. So the arcade came out in October of 92 of the original game, mm -hmm. and I think in September of 1993, it finally came to home consoles. Yeah. And I heard of Mortal Kombat while reading a comic book. Ooh. I was leafing through a comic book, and I came up, and it was one of those comic book video game ads. Comic books were stuffed full of video game ads mm -hmm. in the old 16-bit uh, uh, wars. And it was the first game I ever saw that was for both Genesis and Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, that was really that never happened. It's a lot then. rarer back then. Yeah, it did, but it was always licensed games. Yeah. or it's like sports games and but stuff. But you didn't see arcade ports do that no. a lot. Um, they would pick one or the other, and uh, developers that made original titles always picked one or the other because developers, actually, believe it or not, people had strong opinions on the architecture of these two systems. Yeah, they had very strong opinions on it. If you go back and look at interviews, um, people would say, "Well, you got more color on the Super Nintendo," mm -hmm. which was true. Well, you've got more uh, processing power on the Genesis, which was true. Yeah. Uh, sound is better on Super Nintendo. A matter of opinion, but mm -hmm. I think objectively speaking, I think the sound on a Super Nintendo was superior. Yeah. Uh, objectively speaking, I prefer personally the Genesis sound, mm -hmm. but I don't argue with people when they're like, Super yeah. Nintendo is better. So yeah, because back then the console war, like, there were legit differences. It's not like it is now where you're comparing like your PS4 or PS5 to the Xbox and it's like, okay, this one's got an extra gig of RAM and you know, they both have the same processor or whatever. Yes, it's, and it's it was different then. Yeah. Like it's negligible nowadays. Yes. It is it's a hundred percent different, especially because games are specifically made to be like standardized and optimized for the consoles. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yes. Back then, like different world. Yep. Like, there's a reason why Sega was able to get away with Sega does what Nintendo don't. Because it literally could do things. Yes. Yes. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and people don't remember this, but Genesis won for the longest time. It wasn't yeah, it until was, Donkey Kong Country that yeah. SNES was able to t take it back. Oh, my God. Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, uh, <sighs> fantastic, fantastic video game. Um, if if my precious Genesis had to lose to a game, yeah, if ever at there had least to be one, it was that. Um, but so this game came out for both of them, and I was flabbergasted. I was like, "How are mm -hmm. you gonna? How? How does that yeah. even work?" I was like, 
because I didn't understand how the video game industry yeah. worked. I didn't. I just thought that we were ten. You know, <laughs> I just knew that in the ads they didn't like each other very much. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I can't believe this playing. one's funnier. So I want it. It, it, it. Well, they had the Sega Scream area. Yeah. Uh, I you know. Nintendo, Nintendo always played it. You know, Nintendo was afraid to get in trouble in class. Yeah. Sega was that cool kid in the back. He had the, the uh, sunglasses. He had the sunglasses, and uh, he he smoked yeah, probably. Probably uh, he had one of those switchblade combs. Oh yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> that man. That Sega. He's you know. Which I have a funny story about switchblade switchblade combs. I could tell somebody one day. Doesn't involve Mortal Kombat at all, <laughs> but so I'll save that for the Discord if anyone wants to hear it. So, the, so I w- uh, that was the first time I heard of it, and mm. um, the first time I played it, I played Mortal Kombat Two on Sega Genesis. Yeah. When, when was the first time you played one of the original three? The or when, when did you first hear about it? And that's such an I, odd question because yeah. it feels like Mortal Kombat was just always there. It's so there, and, yeah. but at the time it really wasn't. Um, I, te- okay, so I played a little bit of like Mortal Kombat One. At one point, I never owned it. Um, I like went to a friend's house and I got to like play it like twice, and then that was it. It happened a lot back yeah. then. Yeah. Um, and I was like, "This is really neat. I like this." I may have borrowed it for like a day at best. I borrowed it, um, but that was it. In terms of the first real, like, full-on experience, I was actually a little late to the game. My first Mortal Kombat that I owned was Ultimate Three. That I owned now on the Genesis. That was the first one I actually owned. I think that might have been actually been the first one I owned. Yeah. Um. I, I think I rented them. I think I uh, I had friends that owned yeah. um, the games, but Ultimate Three was actually Ultimate Three was my Mortal Kombat game. Yeah. That was the one I knew the best. Um. Yeah. It, that that's the one where I, I I developed opinions on characters. Like to this day, I do not like fighting Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> um. Because he always dominated me on that acid stage. So, uh, Mortal Kombat Ultimate 3 was one of those weird video games Mm -hmm. that came out. And what's funny is we don't think this is weird now because what we're seeing right now is when a video game comes out right now, it's Mm -hmm. for everything. It's for, and not just everything is in both the major players. Mm -hmm. It comes out for the previous generation right now, too. Yeah, and PC as well, Because they know that most people don't own mm-hmm. an Xbox uh, Series X. I, I hate that they call I know. it that. I uh, hate it. It's so Xbox confusing. is so dumb with their naming scheme. I like the nice linear I progression. Liked, I liked Xbox. I liked Xbox 360. I liked Xbox One, but then they gave you the One S and the One X, yeah. and then they come out with the One C. Like, just drop the One. Yeah. Just drop the One from just, it. Just like, do something weird. If you're going to give it a weird name, make it a distinct weird name. Xbox is, Cubed. Yes. I would have liked that. That'd be X, perfect. Um, that would make me incentivized to buy it because it's weird. Yeah, it, but like, um, like PlayStation, you know, that is that that is a naming scheme you could set yeah. your watch to. Yeah, fine. you know, you want to know two. what comes after the PlayStation? The PlayStation, PlayStation Two. two. Yep. You want to know what the what two systems for the PlayStation Two was? <laughs> it was PlayStation Four. Like, mm-hmm. if you if you mastered first grade math, you know what you're getting yes. with uh, Sony. You're good. Um, there are three or four years we'll have the six. It'll be great. That is why a PlayStation Five proudly sits on my <laughs> mantle under my television. If I, if if I could find one, I would get a PS5 first before I got the new Xbox. Because the new Xbox literally doesn't do anything that my computer or my uh, Xbox One can't do. But it, this was one of those weird games that came out for, like, every single system all at once. It came out for, uh, wait a minute, hang on. Is this true? Hmm. Did the PlayStation not have... Mortal Kombat Ultimate 3? Did the PlayStation 1 not have it? I don't remember. I don't think it did. I'm looking at the wiki just so I can tell you guys the dates, and it's wild because the Saturn had it. It came out that's for... E- that's extra wild because, I mean, a lot of Saturn things got poured to the PlayStation. It came out for Saturn the same month that it came out on Genesis and SNES. That's weird. So Genesis got it. SNES got it. Saturn got it. PlayStation didn't get it. I know distinctly that Mortal Kombat Trilogy, that game came out yeah. for the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder why they wouldn't give it a PlayStation release. That's so you think, odd. Uh, well, you think maybe Sony had some kind of weird thing going on with Capcom and Street Fighter? I'm not sure. Um, I'd but believe it if I heard that. It, it's, um, it is considered... Uh, Mortal Kombat 3 is still considered by fans to be one of the highest points of the series. Mm-hmm. 
It, it is my favorite Mortal Kombat yeah. game. You know what's funny? Ultimate 3 would have been a patch now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ultimate 3 would have been a patch now. That's so funny to think um, about. These fighting games did that a lot. All those versions of Street Fighter 2, uh -huh. all of those, those all would have been patches. Yeah. And it would have been fine. Um, Street Fighter 3, I think, I was the last fighting game I can remember that did that, where it literally had other releases yeah. to that, update that's itself. That's probably, probably um, right, I would say. So... Uh, Mortal Kombat Ultimate 3, I remember getting it because it came out. It was one of those games that came out the month of my birthday. It came mm -hmm. out in 1996, so I was turning 10. Mm -hmm. And I got the game the month of my birthday. And I remember it was the first video game I was so damn excited to get. <laughs> I was so damn excited mm -hmm. that I got this. I was begging my parents to get it for me. They actually got it for me. I had a Sega Genesis. The Sega Genesis was finally in my room yep. because 1995 was the year we moved into our house. Mm -hmm. Um I was in the third grade. Yeah, and so when we moved into the house, I actually had my own room. I had my own space, and the Genesis was mine. My brother got a Super Nintendo, uh -huh. and I didn't want anything to do with that piece of shit <laughs> when I was a kid. I really didn't. I loved yeah. I, I loved Super Mario World. That's one of my favorite games mm -hmm. of all time. That was co sort of a guilty pleasure for me as a child was yeah. I would sneak off and play Mario. <laughs> and that is so... Uh, recently, someone in the Discord asked me because I used the name Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. and because what it was was about twelve years ago when uh, Don Arms first started making content, I started wanting to do things that I couldn't do things very often, mm -hmm. and I just did things when I could. And Adam was like, "Hey, we need a screen name for you," and I was on a Nintendo kick for whatever reason, and I yeah. said Super Nintendo. Didn't think anything of it. I bought a PlayStation Three a little bit after that. Had to make a PSN account. Called it Super Nintendo because that's funny. I'm on yeah. PlayStation. But my history was always as a Sega kid. Mm -hmm. Always as a Sega kid. I, I hardly played the play, uh, the Super Nintendo. Most of what I played on Super Nintendo is going back and playing re-releases of old Super Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. um, and having said all that, uh, the SNES Mini, I absolutely love it. Yeah. I think it, I think that was one of the best collector's items ever. But um, anyway, I've been stuck with a stupid name. And we started the Discord. Adam <laughs> was like, I, my name was something else. And Adam was like, hey, change it to Super Nintendo. That's how fans know you. They don't. I, I call myself <laughs> Bo on this stupid fucking show. Um, and I recently changed it back. And there's been like kind of a controversy. Like people <laughs> will message me in other mediums being like, hey, what happened? Well, you're not on the Discord, bud. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm dude, there. What, what's the T? What happened? I have my big Joe profile <laughs> pic. Like you can't miss me, man. Um, anyway. Um, I was so excited to have this game. It was in my room. I was playing Mortal Kombat in my room. I was beating the game with my favorite character, Sub-Zero, mm -hmm. on my own, and it was Ultimate 3, so you could play as Bihan and, yeah. uh, shit, what is the good Sub-Zero's real name? Uh, I'm glad you um, asked, because I'm not going to remember. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's been a Bihan is the one that became Noob Saibot. He was the evil one, the one scor who killed Scorpion's family. Yeah. Um, the one Scorpion wanted to kill. He's the one in three that is still dressed like Zero, right? Yes. Because uh, Scarboy, Scarboy is, is the good our one. is our guy. Um, d -d 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 oh come on! Like, uh, I'm about to say if you're trying, if you deep dive into the wiki looking for that, it's gonna, you're going. Kwai Liang. There you go. Kwai Liang. Um, so. Uh, I, I always liked Kwai Liang Sub Zero because mm -hmm. he, he was cool. He didn't have a mask on anymore. Yeah, he, he was had big out red there. Scar. He had a scar. He's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I loved playing as him, and I, I beat the game several times. Mm -hmm. I did the codes where you could play as Motaro, where you could play as Shao Kahn, mm -hmm. where you could play as Goro. Um, Which played so weird. In they some played ways. weird, and they didn't really work, and yeah. they weren't as good as you thought they were. Well, um, was, Shao Kahn was broken, if I remember Shao right. Shao Kahn could kill you in four hits if you were using the right move, but he was so he left himself so open to attack. If you were against an opponent that knew what they were doing, you yeah, weren't you're lasting done. very long. I did all those little codes at the end where you have to input the codes, you have to uh -huh. play the secret mini games, or watch the video where it'd just be, and it, it would just show you finishing moves. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And finishing moves is really oh, where. Oh yeah, 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 because you could like have a montage of yep. them. Yep. Ultimate 3 was really where the finishing move shined, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. you had so many options. Yeah, because we, uh, we had fatalities. Fatalities, and I think everyone had at least two. Yeah. They might have even had three, but um, everyone had at least two. We had brutalities. Brutalities, which is you just beat the dog you shit out of them. beat them, them until the most, they explode. They're the most boring ones, but they're yeah. still there, because everyone's is the same. In, they just in beat. some ways, it's very satisfying it's just, at the same it, time. It, it's just a loop of combos, yeah, is what you, it is. Until your sprite explodes. You had babalities. Which were so funny. <laughs> where your opponent turned into a baby. Yeah. And that was it. And that that was it. That's they a, didn't and then yeah. They didn't harm the baby. They wouldn't dare. No. Um they were already in hot water yeah. with uh yeah. <laughs> um yeah. no nothing happened to either person. You just now one's a baby. My personal favorite 
I saved for last. Friendships. Oh yeah, friendships, friendships. are goofy little things. Um, I know in um, my, one of my favorites in Mortal Kombat 11, Sub Zero comes and brings in an ice cream bike. He's Sub Zero. <laughs> yeah. He's got ice cream. <laughs> it works. Um, which game was it? I think Luke Hang does like a Scooby Shuffle. Yeah. In Ultimate yeah. Three. Um, uh, which one introduced the uh, the animalities? No, wait, you're right. Anima, never mind. Well, that animalities. Was in three, that was in Ultimate Three. That was introduced in Three Two. Um, so, it, Ultimate Three gave you a lot of options in the, and it was so cool to see people pull those yeah. off in the arcade. Oh yeah, because like, because um, if you were like me, especially, I didn't. I was good if I knew how to do someone's like ranged attack. Yeah, like I knew how to do Sub Zero's ice move. I could make Luke Kane throw a fireball. Mm-hmm. Um, I could make him do his bicycle kick. I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah. Fatalities, I stumbled into. To this day, I stumble into fatalities. If I hit somebody with a fatality, it's because I got lucky. I love fatalities. Um, but it, it's and that that's really sort of like the the pathos of Mortal Kombat was. I think going back to Ed Boon talking about how over top it mm-hmm. is, how you can do all these ridiculous things. The, a game known for murdering your opponent in the yeah. most brutal fashion possible suddenly has them handing balloons, yeah. giving kisses, and just being like just that, being silly and being so self aware of itself. Mm-hmm. That, see, that's what made Mortal Kombat so great. Is it? It was self aware, and it everything. It didn't matter what it was. It was over the top. Mm-hmm. Like, like it was eighties power metal. Of video games. Oh yeah, um, like just over like everything turned up to eleven. You know, big instruments, big lyrics, you name it. And that's sort of the neat thing too is like what we talk about here on Ages Your Ages. We talk about killer soundtracks. Oh god, yes. Because there's there really the criteria to get on uh, Ages Your Ages, you need to have a killer memorable soundtrack. Mm-hmm. You need to have addicting gameplay. Yep. You need to have great sound effects that just yeah. last the memory. Which you want, brother? You want to talk about memorable sound effects? Um, <laughs> There's one when when text tones first became a thing. Yep, I know exactly. When you where this first is going. begin doing text tones, the first one I got, even before Sega, mm-hmm. which is my current one. Yeah. But uh, even before that, and I've had that one for years. But before before I even worried about that, mm-hmm. Toasty. Yep. And, and it, it's. And I remember there was such there were so <laughs> many kids talked about on the yeah. playground how to trigger that in so many different ways. Yeah. Like there were so many like, well, if you're playing on Tuesday, yeah, and you do an uppercut, but it's the third move you've yeah. done, but and not the fifth. And it has to be when they jump at you. Yeah, it has to be when they jump at you. You'll get you'll get the toasty. <laughs> um, and we all had our conspiracy theories on who the hell that guy was. And and the punches have such a distinct sound, the kicks have a mm-hmm. distinct sound. Um, characters scream when they're put into bad situations. Like if you yeah. do like a um, like a Scorpion's uh, chain. Yeah. When you do his uh, his spear chain, mm-hmm. when he pulls them in, not only do you have the super iconic yes. get over here, but the other guy is screaming. He doesn't want this to happen. Yeah, it sucks. He's like, I was having a good. No. He, he literally just had a kunai on a knife plunge into his throat. I walked over here for a reason, man. <laughs> like, I don't want this wasn't it. I don't want to get like, over there. I like how you went shaggy. Well, actually, I was thinking more of a Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, like I was. It, like, it sounded shaggy to I me. I walked over here, and you're pulling me back over there, and it's like, and it, it's like, I, like, I, like Scorpion just get over here, Jerry. It, <laughs> it sounded so. I don't know why it sounded shaggy. It was like, like Scoob. I can't believe he wants. He's trying to drag me over there. Uh, funny thing about <laughs> mentioning Shaggy is um, WB Games is the oh God, publisher yes. for uh, so they have the light like Scooby D- and people on Twitter were blowing up Ed Boon mm-hmm. about putting him in I, I don't know if it was Injustice 2 or if it was because um, NetherRealm yeah. the developer also handles Ed, Ed Boon is in charge of uh, yeah, Injustice yeah. 2 or if they no I think it was Mortal Kombat because Mortal Kombat does Mortal the Kombat. guest character thing yeah it, they wanted all they wanted in, Shaggy uh, in, in uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and Ed Boon was just like no, <laughs> like we're not doing that. Um, Here's RoboCop, <laughs> he, and um, so we're not talking about these current games, but these past two episodes of Acer Ages are going to be really unstructured because it's really just sort of a nostalgia trip yeah. for me and Aaron. So I do apologize about it's, that, to it's you guys. Us gushing, it, it's going to be just us gushing, and uh, so the most recent games in the series: Mortal Kombat uh, 2011, Mortal Kombat X, mm-hmm. and uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, Mortal Kombat 10, Mortal Kombat X, whichever one you want to talk. Yeah. I say. Same difference. Uh, Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat, it's unofficially called Nine, mm-hmm. but um, 
it's j- literally just titled Mortal Kombat. It was a soft reboot of the series and yeah. the story and everything. Which Mortal Kombat does have a story. We're not going to cover it here. It's kind of convoluted. Very. Um, yeah, even before you get to Armageddon, it's super weird. Yeah, for a fighting game, it's super weird. They started doing guest characters, and they were horror movie characters, and I never felt that really click right to me. Yeah, that was like... Like, I know that Mortal Kombat's gory, but Mortal Kombat's always been very action movie yeah. to me. So we had Alien and Predator and Freddy Krueger and... I could argue the Predator. I mean, I, I could get that but, argument, but too. the Alien... And I love the movie Predator, but the Alien, yeah. That's and weird. I didn't weird. really like those guest characters. Now, when we got to Mortal Kombat 11, which is a game I absolutely adore. Yeah. I think Mortal Kombat 11 is an incredible video game. Mm. But we got Rambo. Yeah. We got the T-100. Yeah. Or T-800. Uh, T-800. T-800. Yeah. We Arnold. got We got RoboCop. Yeah. This is what I associate Mortal we got, Kombat uh, with. We got Spawn in that one, too, right? Spawn. Yeah. But VHS era, action movie... Yeah. Ridiculous action movie yeah. things. Um it man, it's just it fits so well and I'm so glad they did it. Like I don't fuck Freddy Krueger in yeah, this fucking game. Yeah, that one's game. weird. That one's like, really it's weird. stupid. Uh fuck Leatherface. Like yeah. what? Well, cuz like why would they Okay, I know Mortal Kombat's come a long way from its roots, but why would they be in a, a martial arts tournament anyways? Yes, it doesn't make any damn sense. Their dialogue in like it's Leatherface. He doesn't even talk. Yeah. What's he do? Rev his chainsaw it, up when someone mocks the him? The Xenomorph doesn't talk. Yeah. It, it, um, it's skirt. It's skitters. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the Predator is the only one I would argue out of those, but that's not even a horror movie character either. I don't, I'll argue this not, night and day. Predator is not a horror movie. It never was. No, I love uh, Predator. That's an action I, movie. Predator is an action movie, and I love that movie. Um, but but he's the only one horror, yeah. quote unquote, I would say is okay. But I agree with you. Like, like. Having the the Rambo's the the, the Robocop. I think the gore was their reasoning. The it, gore of Mortal Kombat made sense. them. I think yeah. that was their reasoning. But I've always seen it more as an over the top mm-hmm. action movie than I have as a horror franchise. Yeah, because it, it wasn't scary. Um, the gore was never yeah, presented. Yeah, it was scary. never presented to be scary. The gore was almost like, I mean, you were doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, was <laughs> it was. It was presented in the same way that action movies would have a big explosion. The explosion wasn't made in the movie to be scary. It was made to be cool looking. I think that's the best way to describe Mortal Kombat, especially at original trilogy, is VHS era action. Yeah, like it's very the whole the plot of the movie, everything feels like just one of those movies that came yes. out back then. Yes. Um, an interesting thing about Mortal Kombat, I will I will tweet this picture and I'll put it on Instagram the day that uh, this goes live, which mm-hmm. will be Wednesdays, as Azure Ages always does. My my sibling, my younger sibling, it, when when they were in high school. They made the Mortal Kombat dragon. I remember that thing, yeah. Uh, You don't have to remember it. You can see it any moment now. I'll I'll show it to you. It's at my house. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I have... Yeah. So what what happened was Mortal Kombat 11 came out, Mm -hmm. and I was like... I, I didn't I, I played Mortal Kombat 9 mm-hmm. but not a lot and at 10 I, I completely skipped over 10 and when 11 came out I was so hype I yeah. was finally in my life where I could just spend money on video games not even think of yeah. it because um, that's where I, it, when 10 came out it's like hmm. yeah um, but <laughs> I remember how hype you were about it coming out 11 came out and I was just so hyped to get that game and I went and bought it and um, my wife uh, just a few uh, probably sometime last year and I've been playing Mortal Kombat pretty Mortal Kombat 11 pretty regularly, and sometime last year she was in uh, Bloomington, uh, where her uh, she was visiting someone in Bloomington. Uh, it, it's a city in Indiana. I'm sure you've heard of. It's where <laughs> IU is, stuff like yeah. that. Um, it's one of four big cities in the state. Right, and big cities stretching it because when college is out, there's yeah. nothing there. Yeah. But uh, a gas station up there had Mortal Kombat G fuels. Oh, that's cool. I am a sucker for those G fuels. <laughs> I don't even care what the shit tastes like. If yeah. you put like put some cool shit you on the put can. Crash Bandicoot on that can, <laughs> I'm buying it. Um, oh my god! Uh, she did buy me the cra- she bought me the Crash Bandicoot one, and she bought me the two Mortal Kombat ones. Which, of course, who do you think are the two characters they picked for different flavors? Mm-hmm. Scorpion Sub Zero, yep. the uh, the franchise's two mascots. Even though Liu Kang is the Shoto, yeah, Liu Kang is the Ryu, yeah. Uh, no He's one gives really, a fuck no. about Liu Kang. Well, he it's, can't freeze people, and he doesn't throw kunai at you. And Scorpion is just such a 90s kid. Like, he's just this rad, 
yeah. hell ninja and like when you, before you fully understood the story of Mortal Kombat you're like man like someone killed his family man yeah. he's back from the dead man. why does he and have a flaming like, skull <laughs> <laughs> he's like Ghost Rider but like I understand this character more than Ghost Rider because I don't understand he's, Ghost Rider at he's all he's not whiny about it like Ghost Rider is <laughs> like that's literally all I knew about Ghost Rider was yeah. that every time I saw him in a comic book he's whining I'm like why would I buy this guy's books yeah. like um fun fact he's actually an angel make Marvel, that make sense Marvel was actually really whiny in the 90s looking back on it there was a whole yeah. lot of whining going and not like a shinji whining where it's like oh i get it's this. acceptable it's like, yeah uh, only spider-man had reasons to whine because that was literally his character he had is that his life, life sucks yeah. um, and he's it's okay for him to whine which i think that whole like never mind i'm not going, <laughs> i'm not going there but uh, she brought those home to me and i actually preferred the sub-zero one which thank god because sub-zero is my favorite character yeah but the scorpion one's good but I, I got those cans, and I was like, man, I wonder if my sibling still has that. Mm-hmm. And I asked, and they were like, yeah. And I'm like, can I have it? And they're like, yeah. Like It, it, <laughs> yeah. it was no large concern for them at all. It's like, whatever. It's so I got it. And the thing's absurd. It's huge. It's absurd. It's yeah. gigantic. Uh, I'm about six foot even. It mm-hmm. comes up to the bottom of my rib cage if I'm hey. standing behind it. And I have. it is still not hung up because I've been fighting my wife over On it. where and you can put it. <laughs> this is not her being a bitch. This is her being a perfectly reasonable adult. Like, I am not hanging the Mortal Kombat thing in my house. And, like, I'm sitting there with the plastic katana my son bought at Epcot, mm-hmm. like, wanting to put up <laughs> my Mortal Kombat emblem. I mean, right there, that's a perfect I spot know, right there. It's, it's, oh, it's so good. I that's love you, that thing. You argue. That's 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 your computer corner. That's your corner. And I want to I wanna, <laughs> I wanna tweet and Instagram the image because uh, they killed it when they made it. They yeah, it's, it's, it, it is. I, it's it was spot Woodshop. on. Yeah. It was Woodshop in yeah. high school. And you went to that I, high school. That yeah. is not a. It was not like state of the art. Advanced wood shop. And on yeah. top, but I I remember when they brought it home, like because I was I was pretty much living yeah, there. At the yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we didn't know he. We didn't know they were making that. No, no. Literally, just one day came they, home they with this in. gigantic freaking Mortal Kombat thing, and like, 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 like. Okay, so I am not related. Okay, I'm not related. So. When I say this, you can you can know it is not the sibling gushing over their sibling's ability. This thing is mint. It is perfection. Like I wish it's I a could, one for one. Yes. Yeah. Like they probably could never do it again, ever. Like honestly, <laughs> it, I mean, it is perfect. because they struck lightning. Yeah, yeah it is perfectly made. It lo- like honestly, you could find this on Etsy for like hundred and fifty bucks. Kind of. Yeah, thing. it's it, one. It's, of the, it's really that good. cool. I yeah. love it. Um. I just gotta, I, I just, I gotta, I gotta put it up. But yeah, uh, that, that kind of tells you how much I love Mortal Kombat. That kind of tells you where Mortal Kombat was in my life. Mm-hmm. And I think every millennial that plays video games has a soft spot for Mortal Kombat. Definitely, definitely. It, it, it's ubiquitous. It's, um, it, like I said, pop culture constantly made references to it, whether they mm-hmm. they knew it or not. Um, it was at this. It was always in the news because. Yeah. Um, in the mid '90s, I didn't know about this. I read a, I recently read a book called uh, "Service Games: uh, The Rise and Fall of Sega." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, by "rise and fall," it means the home console industry, because of course Sega is alive and well, still making fantastic video games, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the ERSB, I did not realize why it came to be, and the ERSB came to be because Nintendo was losing sales. Mm-hmm. In but bo- in I'm, I am not attacking Nintendo here. Both of these companies were resorting to horribly shady tactics yeah. to beat each other. They were and fighting dirty. So remember how Genesis had blood in the mm-hmm. first Mortal Kombat game, but Super Nintendo didn't? Mm-hmm. So Nintendo took footage of that game, mm-hmm. the original Mortal Kombat. They took footage of House of the Dead, the arcade game. Yep. And uh, they took a lot of Sega's ads, which were very mature, very sexualized at uh-huh. one point even. And they went to uh, Congress, and they went to a congressman, and they were like, look at this. <laughs> Look at what they're. Would, my God, would someone think of the children? <laughs> and there were congressional hearings. It's literally like freaking uh, Twisted Sister. And the <laughs> in the in the music industry, it's the same damn thing. It's like the Twisted Sister video where the the teachers trying to stop them from rocking, yeah. but they can't. But, but, it's, um, but it's, it's it's but no, yeah, the, yeah uh, it's the same reason the why. Gore, yeah. um, uh, trials it's, for the it's uh, just as parental advisor. A bunch of like nonsense from dirty handed crap. And so Sega had to write a letter saying, we are going to fix this. But mm-hmm. Sega's like, our whole appeal is that we have this kind of game. Yeah. 
what are we going to do? And brilliantly, they worked with Congress and came up with the ERSB. Mm-hmm. You don't. In uh, honestly, a lot. I know a lot of people felt that parental advisory sticker, stickers on records are uh, censorship. A lot of people feel like the AERSB is censorship. Mm-hmm. I think that's ridiculous. I, I it's think not, it's a perfect compromise. It's not blocking the content. Because a- as a parent, there are things I don't want my child exposed to. I yeah. completely understand that. Yeah. I do. I. I personally think I could personally do the research to find out. I don't need a stick on a yeah, box. How hard is me. it? But it's a good cheap way of doing it. But I think I don't see any harm in it because no. what it does is it allows you to not have to censor everything because it's either that or censor everything. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Is like I don't get why. Okay, I guess I can get why it's people consider it censorship. But the problem is, is that putting a label on your game that says it's a teen-rated game that doesn't remove content. It doesn't block content in the game. It's not like you buy the game, you put in your your age, and now have, now. Have you po- ever had to show ID for a game? Actually, yeah. They make you do that at GameStop. Yeah. They make you show ID for uh, mature rated games. Yeah, I got uh, I got carded um, at Kmart uh, for trying to buy um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Where the hell? There was there a Kmart? Used to be one here. When you had a driver's license, though. I didn't. I was there. Oh, you got carded, but you didn't. You yeah, produce, I had. Yeah. I had to go and yeah. get my mom because I was trying to buy um, Unreal Tournament, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I got carded because I was like twelve, and I had to go get my mom and be like, "Hey, mom, uh, they they say that they have to have uh, licenses on video game sales now, so could you just like g- grab this for me?" And I, I straight up lied about about what that game was to my mom so I could get it. That's a very, <laughs> very your mom move, too, to be just like, this is hella suspicious, but I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. That's a very your mom. I love my it. Mom, um, my mom knew that the video games were not going to be the thing that made Your mom played video snap. games. Yeah. Your mom played. She was a fucking amazing yeah. platformer, 2D platformers. This woman was incredible at. Almost all the secrets that I know about in Super Mario World she showed me because she she hunted them out and she she was older than my mom yeah she was so my mom was born in 1950 when we talk about uh parents not understanding video games when we were kids that was very true and aaron's mom was really a gem amongst them yeah she genuinely loved video games it was really she did not like 3d games no uh and (laughs) and and they're like uh uh she did she loved yoshi's island um but she could not handle the stages that had the little drowsy dudes. Yeah, that made, it made her nauseous. Shake, that yeah. would make her nauseous. But yeah, I remember she didn't like 3D games and she didn't like super scalar games, like no. racing games and stuff like she, that. She uh, she liked um, the super uh, the super scope on Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She liked platformers like Super Mario World, Donkey Kong. Um, she liked that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, what's funny is my mom was technically a boomer. Oh yeah, technically uh, she was born in 1950. Yeah, I mean the the heart of the boomer generation. Yeah. So that I always thought that was extremely cool about your mom. But yeah. um, more, I, I, I like I said, virtually every platform you could play these games on, mm-hmm. you could play. I mean, every platform that exists since the release of the first game, you could play these games on. Yeah. They're they're the most. I I Hell, honestly think they're the most widely available games. You could probably get on. On even Android and iPhone, I bet. Yep, there are iOS ports. Wow. Uh, there are Android ports. Um, That's insane to think. Gog about. typically has this trilogy on sale. Almost every time yeah. I see a sale on Gog, they have the trilogy. Gog's really good about that. I imagine games. they're on Steam. Um, Probably. I'm sure there's a collection of some sort. They they even ported like Ultimate Three, I think, to the Nintendo DS. Wow. Um, so it, it's there's almost no excuse not to play it. Uh, a, a few years back in. Um, the Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation Two generation. They did Midway Arcade Classics. Yeah, which uh, I have one these, of those. I think these games featured prominently on the Midway Arcade Classics. And what's really cool about those games? They had a lot of extras, no, and you can see a lot of promotional material yeah. for the first three games. I don't have that. I'm sorry. I have a Sega collection like that on my um, 360. And oh, the, is it Sonic's Genesis collection? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, that's Primo. Yeah. I am such a Sega nerd. You guys are gonna have to give me a minute. That's Primo because that actually has Sonic Three on it. Yeah. If it's the one I'm thinking of, I'll send you a pic. Almost every Genesis compilation since then, mm-hmm. I think I think the Genesis Mini might have it, but almost all of them don't have Sonic Three. Hmm. Sonic Three is a rare release nowadays, That's so weird. it's really cool that yeah. yeah um, I'll, I'll shoot you a pic later. So, this, this is uh, I love. It. I just said I was a Sega nerd, and like everyone <laughs> that follows our social media already, if they're like, it's all you we talk know about. This. Um, <laughs> but 
So there's no excuse not to play Mortal Kombat. I strongly suggest it. Uh, closing, I forgot to ask this at the beginning. Have you ever played any of the original trilogy on a arcade cabinet? Uh, yes. Um, Which was the first one you played? I played the first one I ever played on in an actual arcade was two, I believe. If I remember correctly, it was Mortal Kombat 2. Um, it was in one of the bowling alleys my mom always took me to uh, since she bowled on a league. She'd give me like $10 and quarters and set me loose until the the tournament was over. Yeah. And I'd go, you know, race yeah. hell in the arcade. And I, I, if I remember correctly, it was Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, 2 was very prominent. Yeah. Um, that, that was the first one I played. Um Guys, there's there's no excuse not to play Mortal Kombat. Yeah. These are classic games, one, two, and three. You can get literally everywhere. I would I think I would still rather play Ultimate Three than Eleven even. I, I, think, could, I mean I if could I'm definitely see that. You. So I think I'd probably rather verse Eleven's AI than threes. But, <laughs> um, but no, but yeah, go play go play some Mortal Kombat, and while you're doing it, pull up the Mortal Kombat theme on YouTube. Have that blasting in the background. The movie theme. You will thank me later. Yeah, it's it's a banger. <laughs> it's a banger. So guys, as always. Uh, relevant links in the description. Yep. Uh, this Hit the is Discord. Us, this is us signing off. Have a great week. Yep.